Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not officiated with, still not affiliated with the College Board. And today's topic, I'll just call sampling techniques. So we've already heard the term simple random sample a lot, and the simple random sample has nice properties. It's unbiased, and so on. Um, sometimes, though, we want to take what's called a stratified random sample. For example, suppose we were doing an exit poll, and we, when the uh, when the election's over, we want to analyze the results by race. And if we take a simple random sample will get a very small sample of minority voters. So we would could oversample minority voters. Let's try, say try to sample two twice as many minority voters as you would in a random sample. And then of course when you get the final results you have to um, if you're trying to get the overall results of the exit poll you would multiply the results in your, of your minority voters by one half to compensate for doubling. Another example of a stratified random sample is the Federal Reserve's study of consumer uh, finances because uh, they're interested in particularly in the behavior of wealthy people and how they allocate their assets. They will oversample wealthy people and then when they're uh, applying their results to the whole population they have to uh, count, you know, counterbalance that, reweight uh, re -weight their results so that they um, compensate for that stratification. So that's called a stratified random sample. That's a pretty simple thing to understand. Another issue that comes up in sampling is the issue of non-response. Okay, so, and it's particularly important if you get a big non-response. So let's say you, uh, your goal is to sample um, 500 people and you only reach uh, 150. And so you're, you, you're legitimately worried that those, of those other 350, Maybe there's something systematic, you know, the classic thing of, um, you know, the, the people that are home during the day are a different sample than the people who are not home during the day. So if you made all your phone calls during the day, the non-respondents would, would be different from the respondents. And so your respondents would not be representative <coughs> of the non-respondents. So one clever approach to that dealing with that is to take a sample of the 350 non-respondents and just make sure you get that. So let's say you take a sample of 50 of those. So, so it's the, you take a sample of 50 non-respondents, you work really hard and you get all responses from all those 50. Then you compare those 50 to the 150 that first replied, and if they give similar results, then you say, well, there's no issue of non-response bias. But if the um, if you get different results from those 50, then you either have to use the, that sample of 50 as a proxy for the 350, or maybe just throw your study out altogether until you can get uh, full responses. So while I'm at it, let me talk about um, you know, some other issues in sampling or, or polling. Uh, you know, taking a convenient sample, taking rat, you know, not a random sample, but a sample of people that are easy to get hold of. They're obvious. I hope you realize that there are biases with that. Uh, if you have two internet site, if you have internet polling, is is uh, it's very hard to address the bias there. Um, 
you know, let's, obviously the people who go to, let's say, the CNN site versus the Fox News site are going to have different views, and so if, if they both take internet polls or on the same topic, they're going to get different results. Uh, somebody came up with a clever idea for uh, internet polling, which is was to sign up lots and lots of people to uh, be willing to take an internet poll and then pick a random sample, just a random sample out of that, uh, and then they can also check to see if they're sa if the sample that they got uh, of respondents was uh, similar was representative of, the, of their whole uh, panel of people. So, um, so there are ways to do internet polling that uh, can approximate random sampling. Um, Another issue with polling is uh, the way the question is worded. Also, you don't even have to word the particular question in, in an unusual way. The questions that precede the question that you ask will affect how people answer a question. So, uh, you know, if you ask a lot of questions about how how much trouble the government budget is in, and then you say, you know, do you think we should cut taxes to stimulate the economy, you may get a different answer than if you proceed the question about tax cuts with a bunch of questions talking about the pain and difficulty of people finding a job. Um, so you can't even read the wording of a question to know whether the polling is inducing a bias or not. So um, there's just there are many, many challenges with polling, and I won't get into all of them, and I think I'll just stop there.